In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Dear brethren, what is our Lord's message for this Sunday? What does the Church want to convey to us? Today's Gospel in the parable of the cocoa and the good sea. The good Lord creates good, and the devil tries to disturb this beautiful work by sowing evil. And good and evil will be found living together in the same societies, in the same country, the same family, and the same individual. Only in the end will it be possible to make a complete separation. It seems, it seems difficult to make the, the, the separation between the good and the bad before we die. The devil takes advantage of this situation to spoil God's work as much as possible by trying to make the cockle as bountiful as possible and to completely overwhelm the good wheat. The good wheat, on the other hand, has the grace of God and therefore all the help it needs to avoid contamination. But the result varies depending on the good will of people. What is the greatest danger today? The greatest danger the greatest misfortune is that we don't even know the difference between cocoa and wheat. It's true that God will calm everything down and make everything right, as he said last Sunday, but it's bad enough that we live in a world overwhelmed by sin, yes, it would be worse if we, as children of God, were unable to recognize the cocoa. If we are to help others out of the mess, we must not be fooled in the first place. We have to recognize bad merchandise so that we don't buy it Listen to this. The devil uses the same means to control societies as to control individuals. In some man manuals, we find the means to control a society. Here is Satan's method of control. First, weaken people from birth destroy human nature from the beginning. The devil begins by destroying nature to prevent grace from being able to work. Grace needs nature. If Satan, if Satan succeeds in destroying all balance in little children, when they grow up, they are helpless. This is why he destroys families to make wounded people from childhood. He also tries to make us as undisciplined as possible from our early childhood. He tries to make us slaves of, to our own desires and it prevents parents with various excuses from correcting us. This will, unsurprisingly, result in adults who struggle to control themselves, desiring pleasure above all and unable to accept suffering. Parents, don't be fooled. Your children should not have what they want, but what they need. They must be strong, resilient, 
be very careful with television and mobile phones. And not to forget, the devil also tries to uproot us from the beginning. That is, to take away our attachments to our family, to our country, to the faith, so our identity. So that having lost everything, we identify ourselves by strange choices, by a particular way of behaving, and for some, by the ink uh, tattooed on our skin. He steals our identity to replace it with, with nothing. Second, people who think and have knowledge are likely to discover the devil's traps. As a result, the education of parents and the teaching of the schools must be reduced to job preparation. Everything should be oriented exclusively towards practicality. Above all, we must avoid feeding the mind with history, philosophy, art. We must try to make people believe that these are things for, for people who have nothing else to do. Why? Because an uncultured individual has only a limited horizon of thought. And the more his thinking is limited to material, mediocre concerns, the less he can find God who is superior to all that. So no one will stand up for his faith, for his country, for his language, if what is really important in life is to try to live with as little trouble and as much money as possible. Moreover, to ensure that the lack of education and instruction remains permanent, and that people remain numb, it is necessary to broadcast massively via television and the internet mind-numbing entertainment, always flattering the emotions, our instincts. We, the, mind, the mind should be, must be occupied with what is futile and playful. Prevent the mind from questioning, thinking, reflecting. You can see that in films and songs, is the emotions and feelings that are privileged. Sports and music stars have more influence than a university professor or than a bishop. No more reflection. Dear brethren, you are being deceived. They lie to you, telling in schools that your history begins with a great famine. You have over 4,000 years of history. They tell you that your language is ridiculous. You have one of the oldest languages and literature of the world. You are said to be small and uh, useless people. Few countries have had so many saints and scholars. You were the pride of the whole Europe by your unwavering commitment to the faith. The devil will say to you, forget it. It's all in the past, and you have a day of pleasure and well-being ahead of you. But God says to you, read, study, pray, bloom. Third, to numb everyone, impurity will be put at the forefront of human interests and everything that can cause addiction to. So Janistin, 
a great Russian philosopher exiled from the Soviet Union and who lived in the, in the US said, you can enslave people much better with impure images than with, than with watchtowers. An agnostic historian, Unwin, had to conclude that it is a historical fact that the widespread abandonment of chastity in a society inevitably leads to the disappearance of marriage, religion, culture, and all rational thought. Such a society is characterized by people who have little interest in much else other than their own wants and needs. It is indeed everywhere, omnipresent. You are harassed if you don't engage in impure activity. Chastity as well as continence have become unintelligible. Let's not be fooled. Virgins until marriage, pure until death. Four. The devil wants to banish seriousness from our lives, make a mockery of everything of high value, maintain a constant apology for lightness. The devil, in order to take away our faith, publicly mocks those people who think about God and all these stories. And he takes the opportunity to attack anything that, may, that might give a sense of seriousness or discipline. The way we dress, our taste, nothing should be serious anymore. No one should be well dressed anymore. Houses should no longer be neat. We must be at ease. Five. Social exclusion. So, the devil hijacks a society. Then, he creates the fear of being excluded from this society, and therefore, of no longer having access to the material conditions necessary for happiness. Any doctrine that challenges the system is designated as subversive, and those who support it must then be treated as terrorists. At present, moreover, you can end up in prison if you quote Holy Scripture when talking about morality. But we don't give up into the devil's trap. He can take away our honor, our money, and our freedom of movement. Our faith and our true freedom, no one in the world can take it away from us. To sum up, what does cockle look like today? First, from the moment we are born, the devil wants to hurt us, make us slaves, and steal our identity. Second, he wants to take away everything that makes us intelligent. On the one hand, he wants to take away all higher interests, God, history, language, art, anything beautiful, and focus on the lower things, purely practical things and pleasures. Third, to lower us to the level of animals, he puts impurity everywhere. Fourth, to prevent us from being tempted to, to rise, he mocks everything that could be serious. And five, to make us believe that if we come out of all of this, it is to find ourselves alone and in a hostile, hostile world. 
But dear brethren, we will not buy into this propaganda. We are children of God. It is sad that others believe it, but not us. A wise person is worth two. What do you want for your children? Strong children who love God, who love their country, who know how to resist the temptations of the world. What is your identity? Proudly Catholic, proudly Irish. Who are your examples, your heroes? The saints. What is your hope? God, heaven. And with whom do you expect to go to heaven? With your beloved spouse, with your brothers and sisters, with your priests, with your brethren in Christ. We now recognize the cocoa. Dear brethren, we are wheat planted by God and we will remain so for the rest of our lives. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Ghost. Amen.